Alright guys, we are doing the second installment of our Road to Solar and this is going to be the part where we identify how much solar we actually need. This is different for everybody. Uh, as a disclaimer from the last video, we are not social, solar professionals so don't. Uh, this is following us along our process. Hopefully it gives you some insights on how to do it but definitely don't make us responsible for <laughs> anything you guys do. Um, part of a solar audit is to know what you're actually going to need while you're boondocking. And boondocking is again being off grid so you're not on full hookups and that would be the reason to have solar. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you still want to run certain things, um, what are those things and how much power do they consume? Now again if money's no object and you got a huge rig and you can just plaster thousands of watts of solar on the roof and put 10 uh, lithium batteries in the cargo bay this is probably not going to be a big issue for you but if you're conserving power you're on a budget and there's only certain things that you're going to really need while you're boondocking those are the things we want to put on the list we have a great little um, solar calculator that I'll walk you guys through that I found online and we're going to see exactly what it recommends that we're going to need for wattage so first thing we want to do is figure out what you actually use and you may actually have to go out and use your rig a couple times and figure out the things that are must-haves on a daily basis. Lighting is going to be a big one. If you have an older rig, we went through and we changed out all of our 12-volt uh, lights to uh, LED bulbs, which is going to save a lot of power over the old incandescent that came with this. Any of the newer RVs generally do come with LED bulbs, so they're pretty good there. Uh, this unit has a lot of lights. This one, for instance, the fan, this runs on alternating current, AC current, so if we're plugged in the shore power, this guy would work or if we're running the inverter we could use this guy but if we're boondocking this is something we probably would opt not to use and use more of our 12 volt lights which would run off the battery versus running through the inverter because uh, inverters aren't completely efficient and you have some loss when you run when you convert a DC current to AC current to run things like this regular bulb and ceiling fan. Uh, some of the peripheral lights over the couch those are things that we probably wouldn't need while we're boondocking, so I'm not going to count those. I'm just going to count, and these all can be turned off. So, you know, if we only need four of these versus six to save some energy, we have that option as well. So what you'd want to do is just go through and count the lights that you're actually going to use and figure out how much, uh, how much usage in a day you're going to need. The other thing as far as appliances, we have a refrigerator that runs on propane. A lot of the new units have residential fridges, so those are things that you're going to have to look at. If you have a residential fridge, you're going to need more power. Where we have the propane unit, the three-way switch, three-way power, uh, it only runs on minor 12-volt power and propane, so we're going to use a lot less. Our cooking uh, appliances, like our stove, run off propane as well. The microwave depending on if you're a heavy user for microwaves you're just going to have to calculate that in and figure out how much wattage your particular brand microwave uses. Same for uh, Instapots or coffee makers, um, other type of appliances that you're going to use that are powered alternating current. Put those on your list and figure out how much time on an average day you're going to use those. And you may not use a microwave every day, but one day you might use it for 20 minutes um, one day you might not, so you're going to average that like 10 minutes a day. So that's through your kitchen. Uh, the other part that you're going to want to calculate is your water usage. Uh, using your 12 volt water pump, so you're going to fill your reservoir with water. And showers and sinks and things like that are going to run off your 12 volt pump. So figure out how many minutes or hours in a day, hopefully not hours, but how many minutes in a day you're going to run that pump and then put that in your calculation. So that's part of it. Your water heater, for us we have both. We have electric and propane, which I think most units are going to have. Um, obviously you're going to have to run it on propane and if you're boondocking in the colder months or the winter months you're going to have propane furnace typically but you're still going to have that blower motor running which consumes a lot of power. So just figure out what time of year that you're going to be operating your system and then plan accordingly. Uh, we're not anticipating running our air conditioners off of solar, so we're not even putting those in the equation. But we are going to use our ceiling vents, our fans, and those are also 12 volt fans. So we're going to put, we have two of those. Um, we're definitely going to put those in our solar equation.
And again, we're just going through counting lights that we'd use. We definitely use our lights in the bathroom. We're definitely going to use a couple lights in the bedroom. And then, and then personal appliances like cell phones, charging cell phones, charging laptops, um, if you're running TVs, uh, any video games, anything like that that you use on a typical basis, uh, just put those in your calculations. And again, that's something where you have to kind of live in the rig for a little while to figure out what you're actually using because some things may be overlooked and they may be pretty big energy hogs. So that's what we're doing today. We're just making a list of all the things. Um, that we anticipate wanting to use on our solar and then we'll show you on our desktop how, uh, how that goes in the, the calculator. gppower.com I'll link that below and you can see right up here under resources in the learning center is where you're going to find a lot of frequently asked questions a solar sizing guide how to solar but we're going to check out the solar calculator here and we're going to start sizing. You go down, pick the RV type, and we're in a fifth wheel, so I'm going to click that. And we're using lithium batteries, so I'm going to click lithium. And right now we have two batteries, so I'm going to click that, and we're going to hit next. All right, and we're full timing, so we're going to click that. And if you camp in the spring or fall, those are things that you're going to want to click. And then also we're doing more than four nights. And this is where you start plugging in your DC appliances. So all those things we talked about, the light bulbs and the water pumps and so forth. So the first thing is we have LED bulbs, so we're going to check that. And we're going to click the number of bulbs that we actually want to use. Obviously, we're not going to use all of our lights. We're just going to use the ones we need. And then how many hours per day we anticipate using those. So I'm just going to hit four. And the next thing down here is the water pump. So we have one water pump and let's call it 20 minutes a day. So we'll call that two showers and washing some dishes. Next thing is DC TVs. We don't have any DC TVs, which are direct current. So we're going to leave those at zero for right now. And the next page is going to have AC, so we'll check those out. Here we have fans. And we're going to run those quite a bit. So we're going to do eight, uh, yeah, let's do eight hours a day. And we typically don't try to boondock in cold climates. So our furnace vent fan, um, I'm just going to put one hour, but uh, that's kind of an average. So. Well, let's go with two just to be safe. And DC stereo, we have one. And we don't use that too much, so we're just going to use one hour a day. And we have a three-way fridge, so let's click that. And run cycle, we're going to call that, oh, I don't know, probably 10 hours. And then USB charger from charge control, we don't have any of those. So we do have the propane alarm that runs 24 hours a day, so that's default. And if you have any other DC appliances you want to add, you can click them right here. And how many hours you use it, how many amp draws, so those are just individual needs. But we're going to move on to the next page, which is the AC side, alternating current. Which is going to be all your, you know, basic stuff that you use in the house. Uh, we do not have a res residential fridge, so we're going to hit no. We have two cell phones. And we charge them about eight hours a day. And then moving down, these are our regular TVs. Uh, we do have two TVs, but I'm just going to use one. And let's call it three hours. Try to stay off the TV as much as possible. And we're not going to use DVD players. We don't have satellite dish. Uh, microwave, we're going to use a little bit. So we're going to have one microwave. And we'll call it ten minutes. And we're going to try to stay away from the toaster while we're boondocking and we're definitely going to need that coffee maker so we're going to put one coffee maker and we'll keep it at 10 minutes we're going to skip the blender we don't have any desktop computers we have two laptops so we're going to click two and we're going to we typically keep those charged all the time but uh, let's just say 12 hours a day and we don't have a CPAP machine, so we don't need that. And AC appliances, again, I mean, if you have certain things that you use on a regular basis, put them in here and how many amps they draw, but we're going to leave this blank for now. 
we always have the generator if we really need to use extra power. So it's going to do a little calculation for us here and it's going to give us a recommendation for their system which is 1140 watts in solar and a 3000 watt inverter charger. Um, again, we did not go with the Go Power system, but this gives us a really good idea as to what we need. It's also telling me that the uh, two batteries is too few for the systems, and I'm going to be short 95 amp hours. So we're going to need at least one more battery. And if you use uh, lead acid, just keep in mind that you need double the amp hours. So 200 lead acid, 200 amp hours in lead acid is actually about 100 amp hours in. Uh, lithium so you don't want to discharge more than 50% on a lead acid and we can see here the 295 is our amp hours that's going to be our daily draw so you know we're definitely going to have to get at least one maybe two more batteries and down here just going to give us a breakdown of all the stuff that you know I inputted and we can adjust that I can go back and change things you know use more time less time um, a couple things like the furnace fan that used a lot the 16 amp hours and let's see here, there's a couple other things that are pretty high use. Um, yeah, other than that, it's pretty standard. So, I mean, this is a good site to kind of get a ballpark of what you need. And from there, you can start designing your system. And like I said, we're not going to go with uh, the full solar packages of yet. But this is something that we can start with and grow our system from here. And as we get more batteries and, you know, we upgrade our solar panels, you know, these are things that we can just keep moving, keep moving toward that goal of being completely off grid. And like I said, we still have our generator. So if we really need to power some things up or we have a rainy day, we can bust out the generator and just keep it going that way. So, all right, let's move on to the next part and we'll uh, get to the install next. And thank you for staying tuned.